if we're serious and we're honest about where we're at, we've been through a shaking and we're questioning some things or without even knowing it, we've become distracted and the edge we had has become dull. My prayer my whole life, I've been in church my whole life, is God, don't let me get dull. And there are seasons I find better than other seasons, but I'm never growing dull. I felt weariness, but I've never become weary. And I want to encourage you that God is saying this incredible ministry called Arise, and your leaders have been raised up, not by somebody who felt to plant a church, but by a God commission. And there is a need for us to understand that the shakings will come, but yeah, where's, where's Annie? Is she here? No, oh, she's gone. You can pass this on. What happened to Annie? Uh, yesterday she slipped on to that slip. The, the enemy's trying to slow everything down. Mm. But I feel even for Annie, she is somebody that, again, is able to achieve the jobs at hand. So you can entrust Annie to get the job done. Uh, Brent would be nothing without Annie. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we need Annie to do what Annie does, but it's like God saying, you know what, the enemy wants to slow you down, but he shot a shot, but this is my response. I'm going to use the next four or five months, and you're going to discover that you're not just the doing person, you're the anointing carrying person. Mm. And there's something that God is going to breathe into Annie's spirit, past Annie's spirit, that's going to cause her, again, still to use her gifts, but there's going to be a new sense of lead. And I, I want to encourage you today, if you've gone through the shaking, Listen to what Peter brought to the New Testament church. When they thought it would happen very different to what happened, and he stood up on the Sunday morning meeting of the conference of the New Testament church. And this is what he says. You realize that David's, David says, Acts chapter 225, concerning God, concerning Jesus, that I foresaw him always before my face. I brought God into focus. Today, some of us, God's saying, would you bring me into focus? And as I brought him into focus, I realized that he's at my right hand. Here it is, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad and my flesh also rejoiced in hope. When you realize who God is, your heart is stabilized, your soul is stabilized. Your tongue becomes positive, and your flesh, your natural life, becomes full of expectation. And there is a new season, and there is a, a, a new day anointing that God is wanting to lead us into. But I think first, the shaking that the enemy is using, God is also using. Because shaking reveals what we are anchored to. So if you're in a boat and you throw your anchor out, if it's just mud and no real substance under the pressure of the wind, you begin to drift. And there is this need for all of us to come back to reset, realign, and to refresh. You see, and so he preaches the sermon. We know 3,000 were added to the church. He goes on in verse 38 and he said to them, so here it is, repent. It's time to face the reality of compromise and let every one of you baptize, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you, here it is, will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, this promise is not just for you, it's for your children. But don't worry about your children. They are going to be, if you step up, have the transference of the Holy Spirit into them. I don't believe today that I can fully function in what God's called me to do unless I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that the future can unfold even though it's the purpose of the Father unless I allow the Holy Spirit to take me and lead me. If you wanted a message title, it would be this. So who's Today, what, what or who is leading you? Is the past still leading? 
Is the blessing that God's brought your way leading? Who's leading them? I want you to think about who's leading them. If this is a new day, it's going to happen because there's a new anointing and it's an understanding of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 25, these things I have spoken to you. Jesus said, while I'm still present with you, the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will bring to you remembrance of the things that I've said. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give to you. So don't let your heart be troubled any longer. Don't allow fear to step into your life. Verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage, by the way, that I go away. Man, wouldn't it have been amazing if we were here when Jesus was walking the earth? And Jesus said, this isn't amazing. What's amazing is this new day anointing. It's this new season that's stepping out. You realize in the Old Testament that God could visit and minister to people only through the prophet. God brought the word to the prophet. And so when the word of the Lord came, God was speaking. But we didn't hear God speaking unless the prophet was speaking. And then Jesus turned up. Some 2,000 years ago, and he walked with 12, and he ministered to hundreds and then thousands, and he was bringing, he was walking. Not only was the word now coming to, the word was walking alongside. But then Jesus said, you've got to get your roller skates on, team, because there's a day coming where it's not just the word coming to you or walking alongside you. The Holy Spirit is going to be within you. Your answer to your marriage is within you. The answer to the challenge of what the enemy is bringing is within you. The answer for the breakthrough is within you. It's not out there when you get yourself in position, when you have to walk to a place where you can find freedom. It's already within you. And so you should get excited that you are... Boy, somebody needs to wake up here. I thought this was a rise to So, who's leading them? So, Paul, who's leading me? You see, he's your helper. He'll come to you. If I depart, I'll send him to you. And he, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, judgment. However, when he, verse 13 of chapter 16, the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you with all truth. He'll not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, dad say he'll bring. And he'll tell you things to come and he will glorify me. You know, I've read these scriptures many times, but just recently I began to read them again. And this is what these three sets of scriptures say. Do you realize the Holy Spirit is the peace bringer? He's the personal helper. He's the constant reminder. If you're in university, write that down. He's the God that constantly reminds you. He's the advantage creator. He's the conscious awakener. He's the truth clarifier. He's the everyday guide. He's the future teller. He's the Jesus revealer. Mm. And yet we're in a church that goes, wow, the miracle of my life was salvation. It was. But once you're saved, there's a greater miracle because God is with you. God is living on the inside of you. God is empowering you. So here's the question, so what could be? So what could be in your future? What could be for your children? What could be for your grandchildren? If you answer the question, who's leading who? Well, God, I need you to do this, this, and this. God, I need you to touch on that last night. We've got faith on things, but not in them. So God, <laughs> I need to discover when I break my Achilles, what this is all about. What, what are you going to do as the enemies try to bring a limitation? And God says, I'm going to go deeper in you and bring something to you. Because all of us can end up like a Martha. All of us can end up being distracted by the stuff that we prayed for as a blessing to build the kingdom. And now the stuff is, don't get too committed because you've got a lot of work to do. I've discovered in my life over many years the wonder of the Holy Spirit's leading in me can evaporate. He doesn't leave me, but my dependence can evaporate. It's like a pool. You get the UV, you get the sun, the heat on the pool, and it begins to evaporate. It's like, hey, there must be a, a hole in the pool. No, it's just evaporating, and life things evaporate. 
And this next season, I believe, for Arise is a season where God said, is saying to every one of us, Ephesians 5.15, make sure you walk circumspectly. Don't, don't ever stop and go, wow, look at what we've done. And that spirit is not in this church. Don't you ever reflect, just learn the lessons from the past, but don't part there. Because all of that was to lead you for what the Holy Spirit wanted to do in this morning meeting and this day. Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. The days, yes, they are evil. Therefore, don't be unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't become drunk with wine. You know what that actually means? It's, it is about alcohol, but it's more than that. It's don't get drunk with the things of this world. Be blessed with them, but don't get drunk with them. Don't get enamored with them. Because if you are, there is a thing called dissipation. The word dissipation literally means that you begin to abandon. Have you ever seen someone that's drinking too much wine? They begin to abandon some of the parameters that are right parameters. Mm. God doesn't want us to do that. And then he finishes it with a uh, fill with the Holy Spirit. A.W. Tozer said, I don't want the world to define God to me. I want the Holy Spirit to reveal God to me. Amen. So let me just give you some quick practical thoughts around this. If, if we are going to change who is leading us, if we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to empower us, then we have to understand the Holy Spirit awaits a license to lead. The Holy Spirit is never going to force His way into your world. The Holy Spirit is not a roaring lion. That's the authority of Jesus. He's like eating to a dove. And He is now being deposited within us, but He is awaiting a license to lead. In other words, your license defines what you can and cannot do. I got pulled over on a scooter in Bali once. And they asked whether I had a license. I said, here, New Zealand license. They said, it doesn't matter in Bali. Obviously, there's a bit of a scam going on with tourists over there. And so they wanted a whole lot of money. But I had already heard about that. So I hid the money in the socks. <laughs> Wise as serpents, harmless as ghosts. <laughs> but your license gives you access. And the Holy Spirit is awaiting a license. You see, I know that. For me, the call of God came out of this longing for the Holy Spirit, encounters with the Holy Spirit. And that's not just the once-off time. It's like there is a drawing by the Holy Spirit to come and allow Him to lead us from the inside out. That's why the psalmist in Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. I will not allow the prognosis. I will not allow what I'm currently experiencing. I will not allow what's happening around me in the world to define me. But He needs a license to lead. He leads upon invitation. Even life was birthed out of Marie and I being in New Zealand for three days. Never thought we'd leave Australia. And for three nights, I just stirred in my sleep as I saw Kiwi Christians that, that just had no leadership. 30 years ago, the church was not a healthy place. <laughs> People were just waiting for a revival, they called it, which was just like, well, we need God to turn up and do. And it's like God says, no, you need to get off your backside <laughs> and be led by me. I'm not just going to do it for you. I'm going to do it through you. Oh, well, I wonder what God wants me to do. He wants to accept an invitation from me. And today might be a day where you say, I'm going to invite you, Holy Spirit, to take me on a journey. So I shift. Who's leading me? I want you to step up. And that began a journey within the next few months. That was in March, I believe, of 1991. We were here in August of that year. So, so why are you doing that? Did the Holy Spirit ask you to do that? Or maybe you may say, no, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. He's a God within you. And our source is determined by what 
priorities we set, who we set as our priority determines. That's why David was crying out. He says, oh God, I failed you. And all of us fail, God. But you know he's crying in verse 10, created me a clean heart. You need to come to me and create a new heart, a, a steadfast spirit. But do you know what he said? He says, but please don't take the Holy Spirit from me. I, I think sometimes today we wouldn't know if he went. Because I need you to lead me today. I thought it was left and the Holy Spirit says, no, it's right. If I can't see that, but okay. I mentioned, I think over the weekend, God stepped me on the shoulder and said, Paul, you're so willing, but I want to take the lead for the next season. I, I, I actually don't think there is one season. I think there are two seasons. There's a season where God says you step up. And there's a season where God says you let go. And when God says step up, you don't feel adequate. So it takes a lot to get there. And then you step up and you take the steering wheel. And now it's, wow, this is amazing. God, you are awesome. You've got humility and you're just thankful and you're sitting there and then God says, let it go. And what's that all about? He says, because now you're going to see what I can do. And as you see what I can do, then you're going to realize it's me and then you're going to step in. And this is a relationship and a partnership. And a Rise Conference doesn't happen without everybody taking the wheel, doing their part in the season. We're in a season of expansion here at Arise. We're in a season of huge investment. We're in here of setting a foundation for something. People look and say, wow, it's a large church. Yeah, it's a large jumbo, but it's nothing yet. It's yet to become the thing that can't fly. Mm. And it is fly. It's yet to become what God's called it to be. We preach things like this. Eye has not seen 1 Corinthians 2. Ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of the human being. The things that God, wow, that's amazing. God, you could do that in my life. Did we read the next verse? But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. You can quote that verse as long as you live and nothing changes. But when you allow the Holy Spirit, you give him license to the He'll reveal them through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what? Man knows the things of the man except the spirit of the man which is in him. So no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received. No one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. You can't know the things of God, but the spirit of God within you can know. Would you give me the license to leave? Yeah, but yeah, but what if I don't understand it? Give me the license to leave. <laughs> God saying that to Marie and I right now. Give me the license to leave for the next season. I think the second thing for me very quickly is the Holy Spirit not only awaits license to leave, he longs for us to listen. The more noise you've got in your life, the less likely you are to listen. Whether it's the noise of failure, it's the noise of shame, whether it's the noise of busyness. Elijah, you know that he had just annihilated the prophets. And he hears that Bathsheba's going to do to him what he did to the prophets, and he's emotionally depleted, depleted. And the noise of her words gets access. So what does he do? He runs. And then when he's completely wasted, he falls under a broom tree, and an angel of the Lord comes and ministers to him, feeds him. Gives him something to drink and he falls asleep again. And then in verse 7 of 1 Kings 19, the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, Would you arise and eat because the journey is too great for you? Our Christian walk is too big for us. Feeling fatigued? It's too big for you. You were not designed to do what God's called you to do in your own strength. Second time, so he arose, ate, and drank, and went on the strength of that food 40 days, 40 nights, as far as war at the mountain of God. God's intersections with your life will give you limited fuel. You're going to go for a while, but you're going to come back to the same place. So when was the last time you heard the Holy Spirit? Come on, when was the last time we heard something when God said go right and we thought it was left and we go hey? And you might say to me, well, how do you listen? Seriously, stop speaking. 
<laughs> I don't know how many people come to my office, Pastor Paul, I'd love to come and get some wisdom, and they talk the whole time. <laughs> they go out feeling better, but they're no different. Your pastor was the opposite. I need somebody on stage. Let's have some keys up there. Your pastor was the opposite. He'd come in and say, before a rise ever started, he said, what did you do? How did you do that? What did you do that? What can you help me with? How can you teach me? That's happened now all of these years. It's still, what can you do? I'm coming down and saying, John, what, what can you, what can I, what are you doing? How are you doing that? I want to listen to that. The hardest people to lead are those who know better. Mm, okay. There was an earthquake. 